On this episode of Travelogue, we'll be discovering the secluded island of Lanyu. Here we'll meet the ethnic minority which resides on the island. And we'll also get to try some of Asia's most underrated snorkeling. It's going to be adrenaline fever as we take our bikes out and then paraglide around the Huadong Corridor. Finally, the famous Taroko Gorge and lots of other things. Hi, I'm Mark Edwards. Welcome to Travelog and welcome to our Taiwan series. I'm about to get on a plane to Lanyu or Orchid Island as it's more commonly known in English. There I'm hoping to do a bit of snorkeling as well as dive right into some Tao traditional Aboriginal culture. Then it's going to be back onto the island to Taichung, up the east coast, northwards towards Hualien, taking in the Taroko Gorge and lots of other things which I'm very excited about. But first, let's get on the smallest stand safest looking plane I've ever seen. Wish me luck. Okay, so this tiny plane may not seem particularly reassuring at first sight. Don't fret, the island is accessible by sea with a two hour ferry ride as well as by air. So our flying little sardine can finally made it up. It's actually a nifty little thing. Uh, there's space for 20 of the, I think 19 people and it takes about 20 minutes to get to the island, so we should be there in just a second. Around 90 kilometers southeast of Taitung, you'll find one of Taiwan's true gems rising out of the sea. Lanyu is a destination of unbridled beauty and endless cultural fascination. This emerald isle covers an area of just 45 square kilometers and is the sole domain of one of Taiwan's original indigenous tribes, the seafaring Dao. With a population of over 3,500 traditionally peaceful seagoing people, the Tao have strong cultural and linguistic links to the inhabitants of the Philippines' Bantan Islands. But Lanyu's history has mostly been shaped by its remoteness. Its inhabitants have been more or less left to their own devices for the best part of 800 years. All of which explains why the sweeping tide of modernity hasn't wreaked havoc on Lanyu. The only real source of havoc here is the weather. The climate is hot and humid, with frequent high winds and typhoons during the summer months, brought on by its geographical exposure. But if you're looking for excitement mixed with a timeless cultural spectacle in a cocktail of adventure, then Orchid Island is for you. But no tears if it does end up raining, because it might be even a better way to check out these places. Many of Orchid Island's residences are built specifically to deal with their unique environment. So don't miss the chance to visit the traditional Tao signature semi-subterranean houses.
，可以进去看一下吧。可以进去，可以进去。那再小小心点，那个。啊，错错对对对对，是要爬进去哈。哎，哇，这个都是什么羊角这些东西跟猪肉，就是代表他的家里家族这个人啊，很有财富。他养很多羊，然后很多这个猪。这个房间有呃多少年了？哦，才将近快一百年，一百多年了。So it's an all-in-one. Basically, I'm in the 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 bedroom area, and they they can、um, make the food over there in the corner. I'm not sure you can see it. It's very cozy. And、uh, this area is more when you've got guests, you come in and uh, and uh, hang out over here. And then when you go to sleep, it's all、uh, it's all in here. Typhoons regularly cut the Dow completely off from the outside world. But this has made them self-sufficient, and they're accustomed to providing for themselves by fishing and organic farming. Although not overly difficult to get to, remarkably few tourists make it out here, which means that Lanyu is quiet for most of the year. So one of the highlights of a visit is the chance to just stroll around, absorbing the timeless rhythms of the island. Such is the reliance on fishing that you'll not be surprised by how important. Boats are within the Lanyu community. Much more than just a means of transport, they hold the key to the livelihood of the entire island. Hello. This 65-year-old gentleman is busy making the eighth boat of his life. For Dao people, this isn't a business; it's a necessity. You don't make a new boat until the old one has had its day, which, in his estimation, is after at least ten years. Here we go, and that's that's what the end result is: traditional Dao boats with their paintings on the side. So here, quite obviously, we've got the people that would be inside the boat. But more interestingly, this is、uh, is an eye, and they have an eye on both sides. So you have two eyes here and at the back, and so essentially you can see in the boat. That's what the eye signifies. Such is the importance of these boats that a launch festival is held every time a new one is completed. So as soon as they're done, you'll see them taken right out onto the sea. The Dao remain very traditional in their lifestyle, often wearing their uniform loincloths and using their homemade boats to catch some fish. But trying to arrive on Lan Yu in time for a boat launch festival may be leaving rather too much to chance. However, don't despair. Every year, Lanyu's villagers are caught up in a tide of traditional festivals. Arguably, the biggest one being the Flying Fish Festival. It's colourful, exotic, and the most profound expression of the enduring Dao identity. It takes place every spring just before the flying fish season. So you'll get your fair share of loincloths, steel helmets, and breastplates when the men head out to sea in their canoes. It's a lot harder than our 63-year-old teacher made it out to be. You can try this when you come here, with loincloths optional, of course, and you'll see just how much skill these people need to maintain their livelihood. Yep, I'm the joke of the town. It quickly makes you realise that your own family will probably starve to death. It was left up to you to fend for them. <laughs> It's time to see what the real professionals are like. They've just returned from a fishing trip, so let's check out what today's catch is. Five, six, this morning, five. Today, six thousand. Six thousand. Yes. 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 Yes
那个就大满仔了。We're lucky to be here during the flying fish season, which runs from March to June. In that period, the lads catch their entire year's supply of fish. Most of the fish is hung up to dry, so it will last. You want to know why they only do it for these few months? Well, apart from being able to kick back a little for the rest of the time, it ensures that the fish stocks are replenished every year. Talk about environmentally friendly fishing. Uh, where have you come from? Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Yes. Are you here working or holidaying or holiday? holiday? Yes. Why did you come to Lang Yi? Because it's so so quiet. So quiet. I just love this quiet environment, and uh, the people are so nice. Time is precious thing in Hong Kong, but time is nothing here. Hong Kong people have plans. The people here do not have plans. They just relax and they, just relax. they enjoy the simple life. Yes. I You can drive around the entire island in a little over two hours. Just follow the 50-kilometer paved road, and without a doubt, the best way to do it is by hiring a moped. You can take on those winding roads, stopping whenever you please to swim, snorkel, or just soak up some of the captivating coastal scenery. It really is the best way to get your full quota of coastal rock formation. You'll have lions, dragons, turtles, and even lovers looking right back at you. Huh? <laughs> Let's go. The combination of untainted coral reef and the Japan current, which brings in all manner of tropical marine life. Makes Lanyu one of the most underrated places in the world for snorkeling. Enough watching fish. Time to eat some. Exercise, then hopefully a good bit of grub. So I've arrived at the Epicurean Cafe on Lanyu Island, and uh, having a quick quick look around, we've got a bit of uh, yeah Dao tr traditional culture with the paintings around, and some of the more modern stuff. We've got free internet, I think, over there, a nice bar, and what. A Appears to be a map of the island. Yeah, it is. Here we are, right here. Yeah, it's only Shanghai, lah. Oh. Yeah. So now you can see this is a famous food in Oki Island. This is a flying fish. Flying yeah, fish. Flying fish and uh, this is carrots and sweet potato. Okay. Uh, it's like Same thing. The original daily food. Uh, the people, local people. Oh. Very important food here. Despite appearances, Orchid Island is far from lacking facilities for tourists. Homestays, hostels, and B&Bs dot the island, with this place probably the pick of the lot. The Epicurean Cafe is a perfect blend of modern and traditional. Good local food with some nice, strong, exotic cocktails. Are you from Lanyu? No, I'm from Taipei. Oh, okay. So how come you're here? You should song Lan Lanyu like that. Ah, that's a Nibuja. What happened? I just a rom romantic story. <laughs> what ha What's the romantic story? <laughs> when I oh, when I was traveling, I met him. I just uh, fell in love. Ah, oh, <laughs> of course. Look at it. How much I think he's very brave. Very brave. He kiss you. Give you a kiss. Give me a kiss. Xin xin. Xin xin. Well, 
well, the minute you leave the seashore, the sun will inevitably follow you. It's not such a bad thing though when you're looking for some exercise. And our next stop is Guan Shan. It's an old logging town now best known for its scenic 12 km cycle path that loops around the city. That it's something for old and young alike will be evident when you see the diversity of people here. And you'll notice that cycling and healthy exercise in general is extremely popular throughout Taiwan. What a glorious day! The sun's outshining, I'm catching a tan, I'm riding on these uh, bicycle specific roads, I've got palm trees on each side, paddy fields on my right where I can see the lifestyle of the local people. I tell you what, this is, uh, this is quite something, I'm completely relaxed right now. <laughs> With these special lanes, you can choose your own tempo, and it can be an exercise in fitness or just a chance to indulge yourself in a very relaxing Taiwan hobby. You'll be trim, tanned, and armed with a bucket load of jealousy-inducing holiday snaps of the gorgeous countryside. If you're looking for some adrenaline-filled thrills, then head to the Luye High Terrace. This is the place for you if you're happy to sign off your life on a form, and you don't mind if your instructor goes by the ominous name okay. Lucifer. Two, three, go. go. <laughs> there you are. That, that's just the guy who's teaching me falling off the edge. Brilliant. That will be. Uh... Situated a few kilometers north of Taitung, Luye is widely considered Taiwan's top summertime paragliding site. This is thanks to the plateau here, which drops off sharply onto an expansive agricultural plain, providing pilots with several kilometers of glorious cross country flying. The sport and this location in particular are becoming more and more popular. <laughs> Very scared when I was running down that hill. Unbelievable. Overlooking what is commonly known as the Huadong Corridor, you mustn't miss the very real and at times very nerve-wracking bird's eye view of the world. Apparently, people from all over the island, along with pilots from Hong Kong, Japan and South Korea, flock here during the summer months. And why not? There's no charge for private flyers here, as long as you can produce a C-grade pilot's license. But if you'd rather take a back seat, then fear not. There are plenty of instructors besides Lucifer who will happily show you an exhilarating time up high where the eagles fly. Time to hit the road again, and driving in Taiwan is simply blissful. Of course, primarily because of the fascinating scenery, which is captivating everywhere you go, but also because there always seems to be something to jump out of the car for. And the Huatong Corridor Road is no exception. You'll find mountains, flowers, farms, and a little something different. Yeah. 
another point of interest just here. This thing that's shaped like a sundial is actually to represent where the, the road uh, crosses the Tropic of Cancer. So I'm going to go and have a look with this uh, gentleman up here. So this is it, this line that I'm on right here is the Tropic of Cancer. Don't worry if your maturity regresses as you find yourself repeating, are we there yet, over and over. You won't be the first. Taroko Gorge is arguably Taiwan's foremost scenic attraction and one of the most spectacular natural wonders of the world. It's not difficult to see why. Stretching some 20 kilometers with marble walls that block out the sky as they soar several hundred meters above the Liwu River below. You've just got to see it to believe it. That said, you should be aware that the Taroko Gorge is situated well inside the Taroko Park within Hualien County. It's one of Taiwan's most diverse national parks and the second largest on the whole island. So it's probably best to spend a little more time here exploring if you can spare it on your holiday. It's incredible to think that millions and millions of years ago, this was all under the sea. I, simply mesmerizing. Have a look. Formed over 200 million years ago, the gorge is a geological wonder. Slowly but surely, thanks to the Liwu River's industrious sculpting and eroding of the marble rock, Taiwan has been blessed with a tourist spot of immense beauty. And like pretty well every other tourist destination in Taiwan, it wouldn't be complete without the cultural input of its indigenous tribes. Here we have the Truku or Taroko tribe, Taiwan's 12th indigenous ethnic group. They number around 23,000 and are famous hunters, weavers and singers. Leave yourself enough time to go inland amongst the mountain peaks that make up the Taroko Park. Though the gorge is the main tourist magnet in the area, it comprises only a small part of the park. Much of the rest is made up of an easily navigable network of hiking trails, outdoor hot springs and some of Taiwan's most challenging mountain climbs. The park stretches 36 kilometers east to west and 42 kilometers north to south. So there's plenty of land to delightfully lose yourself in. You won't be alone, as the wildlife is plentiful here. So all you nature lovers, make sure you're able to drag yourself away from the gorge to do some exploring. Almost at every turn, you'll find yourself face to face with a crystal clear lagoon or one of the 108 species of butterflies living here. the opportunity to wind down those windows and take in the fresh sea breeze which will accompany you all the way up the east coast. So whatever form of transport you can get your hands on, whether it's a minivan like we've got on a train or even just renting a little moped, I suggest you take the route from Kenting on the southern point all the way to Geelong on the north point and you've got as your companion, as you can see on the right, the Pacific Ocean to take you the whole way. It's without a doubt not one of the most fulfilling experiences driving up the East Coast, so don't rush it. But if you do only take one quick pit stop, try and hang on till you get to the Ching Shui Duan Ya, or Clearwater Cliffs as they're known in English. Located off the Suhua Highway, don't miss this place as the cliffs drop precipitously into the Pacific Ocean. The ideal spot to get a breath of fresh air and take that perfect scenic photograph that you can show off to all your friends back home. And so, on to Fulong, where if you followed us, you will have come full circle. 
and where all that's left of your trip is fond memories. Maybe you won't have time to take in all of the places we visited. Even so, you'll be both pleasantly surprised and amazed at what Taiwan has to offer. And above all, you'll appreciate that this really is an island of untold beauty and myriad charms. Well, it's with a very, very heavy heart that I arrive at the northeast tip of Taiwan. And that's because it signifies the end of our series as a whole. I've had an incredible three-week adventure here. I've met some wonderfully hospitable and generous people. I've really stuffed myself with some of the nicest food I've ever eaten. I've been completely taken aback by the beauty of the natural landscape. We have been unlucky some of the days where the weather hasn't always been on our side. Sun in the cities, for instance, and days like today where we're on the beach. And look at it, it's just a bit grey and a bit of wind. But, as they say, that's just part and parcel of being a traveller. Anyway, I better go before I really decide to move here permanently. I'm Mark Edwards, and I'll catch you very soon on another episode of Travelogue.